This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by writer-director Alex Garland, who, you know, from your previous work, let's see, you wrote The Beach, uh, you did the book, the book of book. The Beach, the screenplays for Dread, Never Let Me Go, 28 Days Later, um, and now you're doing your directorial debut uh, in Ex Machina, a film which is sort of about the, I don't know what you're going to call it, the bridge between artificial intelligence and uh, life. I sort of just want to start in a general um, question with it. I mean, obviously, this is something that's very much of the zeitgeist of now. I mean, in the next couple of months, we have Ultron, Age of Ultron coming out. We have Terminator Genesis. So these things are massively yeah. popular, uh, the I've, concept I've of our film. I've, yeah, because this same question has cropped up every now and then. I'd forgotten that there is that Terminator movie coming as well. But, and you can go backwards, Big Hero 6 and Transcendence and exactly, Chappie yeah. and Her and Automata and yeah. so on. Yeah. So what exactly was it that drew you to um, the, the topic? And not only that, but you have sort of an interesting take on it, perhaps. I don't want to really get too spoilery any of that sort of stuff, but I would say it's somewhat more positive, I guess it would be, in terms of, the perspective well, of no, you, I, I don't think that's spoiler territory. It's not somewhat; it's totally. Yeah, I mean, it it, it is. It's basically uh, the protagonist is Ava, is the machine, yeah. um, and that, that's fair enough. To but say. but what what made what drew you to the concept as I want to do this for my first film? And was it the challenge can, can of trying I, to can, go can for I, it? Can I just sorry? I keep saying this in interviews, and I'm starting to really bore myself. So I apologize for no, that. No, please do. <laughs> and I'm now about to bore you too, probably. It's not my first film. I've been working film for 15 years. Well, and and the, the films that you mentioned, I felt a very close participant. Sure. Do I, I mean, just to no, say. No, no, you're absolutely fair. I mean, the division of like roles on film is a very sort of nebulous thing a lot it of really times. It really is. I, the, it, I mean, it truly is. Well, precisely, we agree. Yeah. Um, I, but, but I understand it because there is this shorthand thing that people say your first film when you've directed. But... Um, uh, but well, let me, how about this? This is the first film where it's sort of like all resting sort of on your shoulders to like determine. The... It's only all resting on my shoulders in a public sense because that's how it's okay, perceived. Sure. I mean, uh, I, I've been speaking a lot to the DOP of this film recently and believe me, he's as nervous about this as I am. <laughs> so so it, it's just that in, in, in a public forum, you, you know, uh, Jeff and Ben who did the music or Mark who cut it and all, all these You're guys. absolutely right. I mean, film is ultimately they're, they're a collaborative process, but yeah. everyone's going to look at you when it comes time to sort of like I know and I'm yeah anyway. Unfo what? fairly or unfairly that's sort of like just the that, reality. that's the deal that's the contract yeah, that's just the anyway deal. yeah no listen I'm sorry I didn't mean to no 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 it's, it's, it's a very it's a very valid point to bring up and I think it's good to sort of remind people that it is such a complex collaborative process because when you see a film like this which has essentially four actors um really at it, pretty much the entirety of the cast. Yeah. Um, it's sort of one of those things that you sort of deceptively think about the scale, forget about the scale of a project like this. It's not like you just were in a house with these people and you're like, let's make a movie. Yeah, yeah, if only. <laughs> no, because uh, then you wouldn't need $15 million sure, to do it. You sure. do it for nothing. But, but yes, yeah, so, but so tell me, what was the sort of so, the, I, I was sort of, sort of curious about what was it about the concept of artificial intelligence and sort of, Perhaps your different viewpoint towards that that sort of drew you to this topic for this project. Well, uh, I think what it was was uh, partly I like sci-fi. Uh, I like working in sci-fi, and uh, the the idea of artificial intelligence and the way it relates to human consciousness, perfect kind of sci-fi premise and setup and sci-fi gives you the freedom to approach it in a certain kind of way so uh so a lot of it just simply came from being interested in some of the problems and some of the interesting stuff and theory of mind of with us and some of the problems of creating strong artificial intelligence you know not, not the ais that we have around us routinely but AIs that might be like us in terms of being self-aware or having a sort of emotional uh, interior life. But but in terms of the difference, I mean, I don't, I, I, it's hard for me to be sure about the difference between this film and the other ones, partly because I haven't watched them because because I stayed away, but, but sure. I could posit that one difference is. It's, it's, it's definitely a common theme in a lot of culture that 
computers and technology and artificial intelligence are heading towards a bad place. No question. And, and what it seemed to me was that the way we configure AIs and our anxiety about them, which is then manifested in the stories we tell, uh, is that we treat AIs as if they exist on a parallel track to mm. humans. And uh, on this parallel track, uh, they are moving at one speed and maybe gathering pace. And that creates a sense of rivalry yeah. and a sense of anxiety that we will be left behind by these super intelligences. Now, if you reconfigure that, and this is an intention what the film does, it says they're not on parallel tracks, they're on the same tracks. The act of creating an AI consciousness is, is not dissimilar to parents and children creating child consciousnesses. And rather than seeing them as being different from us, you see them as the same. They're a product of us. And then the act of moving away yeah. becomes what you would want. Because what parents want of their children is that they outlive you sure. and yeah. they have lives that are at least as good as yours. So, so it might be, if it is anything, it might be that sort of dragging the AI over and, and, and blurring the differentiation. That's an interesting point. I also wonder about, in terms of sort of a general perspective, and I was thinking about this today, is it just an escape um, route or whatever that we can find something to be afraid of and blame easily? Because like, you think about like uh, death and how many people like humans kill all the time and like the massacres that are constantly going on worldwide. Uh, why is it that we spend so much time worrying about the potential danger of machines when every single day we have these gigantic threats to our own selves that we do as yeah, humans. Yeah, self-inflicted yeah. and, and, and self-caused. And uh, somewhere in my starting point was, was, was a frustration with people. And, and what the film is about is really it's suspicious of people. It's, it's, that, that's where it, it, it aims its concerns, I suppose. And, and a kind of a question about AIs, which is, could they have what we've got in terms of an interior emotional life and sentience and self-awareness, but also be more reasonable? Because the thing that all of the bad things that you've just mentioned, and you know, that those are the most extreme cases, but also sure. the more nuanced cases, right. they basically stem from being unreasonable. And uh, I, uh, so, so the, the whole genesis of the thing comes from an idea that you might attach something like hope to the idea of AIs and something like um, uh, affection, uh, sort of parent-to-child affection. That's, that's a great sort of point and something that you sort of address in the film. One of the, the major sort of topics that goes on in the film is the discussion of the Turing test. You know, what is life? And I think about this in the context of like, and this is going to get a little weird, but in terms of like alien life, and I always think to myself, it's so weird that we think about alien life in the terms of the perspective of it's, it's like a humanoid. Like it has to be like our vision of what alien life is, is that it has to be like a human figure that has some sort of breathing system and arms. And, and it's just sort of like, in terms of thinking about artificial intelligence, is it a misguided sort of idea that we just purely view it through our perspective of this isn't life until it's exactly like us. Yeah. One of, one of the key things about Ava, and I can't go into this too much. Sure, don't know spoilers. Is, is, is that there is a presumption. It's exactly what you just said. It's, a, it's really related to exactly what you just said. That, that there's a presumption that an artificial intelligence, a sentient creature would be like us. But actually they almost definitely wouldn't be like us. Um, uh, and, 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 I mean, we can be reasonably sure of that. And, and I would say Ava is, is in some key respects not like us. But that doesn't invalidate her. No. And uh, it doesn't make her ethically compromised. And, the, and actually, we have examples of this right now because uh, I've, I've noticed recently uh, people talking about animals as if they're not conscious or sentient, mm. but they are yeah, conscious totally, yeah. and sentient. Um, we can see that a dog has consciousness and has the, uh, the, the, the ability to feel all sorts of different things and is also self-aware. When it looks in a mirror, it knows it's looking at itself and not another dog. That's not confusing to the dog. Um, I mean, uh, they're, they're, you're absolutely right. Like yesterday, I was literally looking at an article that was talking about a cat in like Poland that would um, hang out near animals that had just had operations and stuff at a veterinary hospital 
just providing them sympathy. It's like clearly Comfort, this right. cat has like empathy, and this is beyond so, what we could possibly. So, of, so then take take these conscious like things that exist within animals, and then here's the interesting thing, or here is an interesting thing possibly. We can see that the dog is sentient, but we don't know what it's like to be a dog. We just can't really get our <laughs> head inside what a dog uh, is actually thinking. And, and of course a dog can't do it to us. And what would be reasonable to say is that with Ava, we don't really know what it's like to be Ava. And Ava doesn't know what it's like to be us. That doesn't mean we can't all get along, you know. What? But, but, but there is this thing. And there are moments in the film, there's a particular moment. I mean, this is a bit spoilery, but where two machines communicate mm -hmm. with each other. But the moment of their communication is hidden from us, even though the camera is right with them. Yeah. Uh, and it's because, in my mind, the thing that they're doing, we are unable to do with them. This is a very interesting point. It makes me sort of think about, you know, the general sort of, um, and this might be sort of a, a, an avenue to sort of put computers as something different. Uh, in life, we always want to find the differences. And, you know, like we battle over sexuality, race, gender, all this sort of stuff. And this is like one clear point where it's just like we can push that away because it's different. And it's interesting to think about that in terms of like, I'm not saying that like, robots are the equivalent of being, you know, a different race or a different sexuality or anything like that, but it is a different group and to sort of try and insta sort of view our yeah, values yeah. just because it's different is a really weird and sort of judgmental it's, approach it's, to it. It's not a different point though, because what you can imagine is if there were sentient AIs and they were put out into society, there would be a cross-section of society that would be incredibly alarmed and probably try and persecute them probably, and yeah. keep them out. And I mean, and I think it's tr already happening if you think about the it. The list of things that you just said, incidentally, are the list of things that belong to being unreasonable. And uh, that, that's our preserve. That's the stuff we do. Yeah. I don't mean you and I, I mean yeah. us as a species, you know. Uh, but actually, I say I don't mean you and I. One of the things, uh, one of the things that I, you know, it's like a sort of liberal sort of type, <laughs> which I am, yeah. you know, and sort of being brought up a certain kind of way and being taught certain kinds of things by my parents and at school and stuff like that. I think one of the th things that was quite interesting for me to learn as an adult uh, sort of getting older is that actually I'm prejudiced and uh, learning where prejudice exists in me. And I don't mean prejudice in the way it's commonly used. You know, I'm not saying I'm a racist, right, I'm homophobic. Sure. I'm saying that, that I will nonetheless have instinctive responses to things uh, which might include sometimes people sure. that are not really based on anything reasonable or rational. It's just a kind of gut response that I need to get over and kind of rationalize or intellectualize to, 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 to knock it out. And, and, and I, I sometimes think this stuff is kind of buried in us. Like we, we are magical thinking creatures who struggle a bit with rationality and an AI might be better at that stuff than we are. Well, that, I mean, that's a very interesting point in and of itself because I mean, I think you're absolutely right. There is that sort of gut instinct and there is that expectation as evolved creatures that we sort of can uh, sort of evaluate those gut instincts and react accordingly and um you're right you're absolutely right the, I, I think and it's even interesting to think about ai in terms of context that we're lumping all ai is going to be the same who knows how diverse ai could be i mean i, I don't imagine it's necessarily going to just all be skynet and sure. they're all going to like unite against us or something like yeah. that i, I mean I, 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 and also, it has to be said, the truth is who knows whether we'll ever have these strong AIs. I mean, sure. we, we, we may or we may not, but uh, um, I, I, I personally, as you can probably tell, I hope we do, because I like the idea. You know. It's a fascinating direction and obviously something that's increasingly important to uh, our world and our culture. Um, so the film is Ex Machina. Um, it's currently rolling out its release now. Or yeah, I mean, I so, believe it's so coming out here. It, the seventeenth. It, it was a platform release, so that okay. means it came out in like four screens, and then the distributor looks at the screen okay. averages and says, "Should we go a bit wider?" <laughs> and then it go a bit wider this weekend, and then they'll look at those screen averages and decide it again. Perfect. It's just that's uh, that's the way these things go. Uh, and in terms of you, do you have a Twitter or anything else people can keep up to date, or do you have any other nope. projects you want people to I, keep I, their I'm eyes? I'm not on for? any. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter or any of those kinds of things. Uh, um, that's. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, 
I am I'm trying to make another movie because that's the that's the day job, <laughs> and um, uh, I've. I've just I've just finished a, a script of a of a novel by a guy called Jeff uh, Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, the novel's called Annihilation, and I've just I just writ, written that and uh, submitted it to the studio, and I'm waiting to find out whether we might get finance for it. Fantastic. Well, I wish you so much luck with this. I saw it at South by Southwest. It is definitely one of the best films I've seen this year. So I hope everyone goes and checks it out and opens Thanks. those next doors for you to work on that next project. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you very much. Cheers, man.